Hey everybody, it's Heather the Painter here, and it is really late on a Tuesday night, so if I start to not make any sense, I'm very sorry, but I've had this question come up a million times, and I figured instead of just trying to throw out numbers and explanations and type, I would try to explain it in um, real time. So I've got an image that was just a really quick test uh, to try out some lighting. And Jack is always with my test subjects, so he's moving in and out of images. But we were just trying to play with a lighting setup, and I figured this would be a really good demo to show how to freehand paint hair, especially curly or wavy hair, as straight hair is so much easier to paint. Um, and I am using Curl Painter 2016, but this is applicable towards most versions of Painter. So if you've got a couple brushes that you're really comfortable with, I'd pull those out. Um, in general, I typically use round brushes for hair because of the amount of control and detail they give me. So I'm going to pull up an oils brush. And I'm going to pull up the smeary round. And I'm going to make a crazy test mark. Let me undo that. Before we get started, I'm going to pretend like this is a real world painting so we would have our clone set up already. Um, normally in real time I work with file quick clone, but in this case because of the time I'm going to do a file clone. Make sure my tracing paper is set to zero in the clone source palette so we can easily toggle it on and off to see the changes. And I'm going to zoom in. So we've got a little bit of an ear sticking out here. We can cover that up with hair. We can fluff up the hair, give her a little bit more. And she's actually got quite a color range in those strands. So if you look on the color wheel while I'm using my dropper tool, which the shortcut is D on the keyboard, we have quite a bit of range here. And we need to mimic that. So a couple things that you want to keep in mind is hair on the highlight side is going to be a very different color than hair on the shadow side. So if you can see that, it's actually gone a little bit warmer and a little bit grayer. So make sure that you're not just picking one color and you're being really lazy and putting it everywhere or it's going to look very cartoony. So we're going to constantly be toggling and resampling and I'm going to try to build this up very um, gently with lots of paint. So smeary round, let's make a test mark. So straight out of the gate, I think this is straight out of the gate. Here we go. It's a little bristly, it's a little harsh, but we're going to make some major tweaks to it. So I'm going to, let's do an opacity about 60. My reset, I typically keep between 10 and 20%, so let's try 20. Bleed, I'm going to keep very high because I want it to be nice and smooth. And feature is really dependent on your document size and your brush size. So we need to find a feature that works and then let it rescale to our size. So that mark was a little uh, textured, a little bristly. This is still a little bristly, and that's the feature. So let's drop that down to about three and a half. Oh, let's go a little lower. Let's go to three. Now I'm, I'm chickening out. Let's go back up to 3.2. That I'm pretty happy with. That gives you a little bit of separation, but it's not so bristly that it looks fake. So I'm not going to work on layers. Because we've got that clone in the background in our clone source, we can work straight on our canvas. And I'm going to sample a dark color, D on the keyboard, and then toggle back to B for brush. And I'm going to eyeball where I want to bring out this hair. So I'm just kind of sketching it out. Sample again. I'm going to fill it in. Let's back out really quickly. Command minus. I'm on a Mac. If you're on a PC, it's control. Looks good. So I need to build up a fairly solid color first before we start layering in the strands. And I'm looking for something fairly neutral. A little darker than that. Let's go a little neutral. And I'm just putting in color right now. So I'm going to take it and make it a cloner brush. And I'm going to paint in the rest of the hair. Back and forth motions. I'm still using that same brush I just made. And I'm following the folds and the curls of that hair. 
Now that we're getting into smaller strands, I probably should change my brush size, make it a little bit smaller. And if this were a real world painting, everything else would be done. I typically save the hair for the very last thing on a uh, painting. But just for the demo's sake, you'll, you'll have to pretend. So there we go. And I go very in depth on hair in all my tutorials on the uh, heatherthepainterstore.com site. We spend a long, long time on hair, various hair, how to build it up, how to clone it, how to bring it to life, how to give it luster. But I figured this would be a good time to show you how to extend and freehand paint. So we're going back into color mode and we're noticing a really big shift. And I say we, cause Jack is here with me. He's probably snoring at my feet. Um, so we need to make this look more like this section. So I'm going to start sampling and layer that in. Now at this point, I'm going to start spreading out my bristles. So it looks like separated strands of hair. And we're going to change that by adjusting our feature. So I'm going to try three and a half. Uh, let's go to four and a half. Looking better. Let's try five. I just had a very big sigh come out of my puppy. 5.3. That's pretty good. You see how we get a little bit more separation in that bristle? So I'm going to start building up a little bit of dark tones. We can see we've got some dark roots. Need to really make sure I'm matching that color. Give it a little bit of life here. And I'm kind of putting it in areas where, you know, the hair would bounce or curl or retract. And we're going to start building our lighter values. So I'm going to sample. I should sample really close to where I'm going to put the color down. I'm not trying to obliterate everything, but I'm sampling close by. And at this point, I'm going to drop my opacity to about 40. Because I'm chickening out. Sample a little bit here. We're going to cover up that ear. The only way we're going to cover it up is just putting pure color. If we keep blending, eventually we're going to make mud in that section. So I'm constantly sampling nearby and then keeping in mind what the lighting pattern is naturally doing to that hair. So I'm going to sample, go a little over top, sample, a little over top, sample, Let's get some hot highlights here. I'm going to drop my opacity to lower to 20. And we can see there's a nice bit of highlight hitting that section. So let's carry that throughout. And my opacity at 20 was not a good choice. Let's go back up to 40. There we go. Now we can see something. And you'll notice I'm frequently toggling between my tracing paper and my document just so I can kind of keep in mind, am I on the right track? Okay, so now I'm going to take this brush and use it as a blender. So I'm going to turn my reset to zero, make a big brush. So reset to zero makes it a blender. It means there's no color on your brush. And it's a little harsh. Let's drop that down to 20% opacity. Ooh, still a little harsh. Let's take that feature and make sure it stays around five. And that is with my size being around 23. And this brush should gently smooth everything out. Now there's a new function in Painter 2016 we're going to try. Let's pull that up. It is Window, Advanced Brush Controls, and it's called Enhanced Blending. So we're going to pull up our blending palette. If you touch the name, you can remove the palette as it's not behaving. Okay. So if we look into our blending part, I'm going to put the preset to balanced and click enhanced layer blending. Let's see if this makes a difference. So this should give me a smoother blend. It's doing a little bit for me. In earlier versions of Painter, it does not have this capability. So sorry guys. This is only in 2016. So I'm kind of blending along the same plane. 
but I'm also getting a little bit too ghosty and too muddy. So let's click that off. And here's where kind of the hard work comes in. We need to build up those strands individually. So we're gonna pull up oils, detail oils brush. Make it really small. You know what, I should reset this. Okay, so this is how the brush comes straight out of painter. We're gonna give it about 40% opacity, 30% reset. Let's try 70 bleed. Uh, let's go to 60 re, uh, uh, opacity. So this is your individual hairbrush. So right now, these are my settings. And I'm probably gonna drop my size a little bit smaller because this is your individual strand brush. So 60 opacity, 30 reset, 70 bleed, no jitter. This one's really important to do brush calibration too. So without brush calibration, I just kind of have, you know, a line. With brush calibration, now we have something that's very, very expressive. So a light mark gives me a very thin mark, or I should say light pressure gives me a thin mark. Heavy pressure gives me a solid mark. So it's gonna be nice and expressive. So if you feel the need to do extra layers at this point, we can add a layer. Click on this middle button, pick up underlying color. And I'm going to sample some of these dark strands because I've lost a little bit of that separation. It's a little heavy, let's go to a 30% opacity. It's still a little heavy, let's go to 20% opacity. And I'm trying to build up a little bit of that separation that was naturally in her hair because this is gonna make it very believable. So I'm taking very close colors to the original and then building up individual hairs because I just don't want it to look like a ghostly, muddy mess. Let's zoom out, looking good. I'm gonna sample some lighter colors and jump around and kind of pay attention to where that lighting pattern's falling and we can see that from the eye that main catch light is telling me we've got quite a light up here. Oh, somebody just woke up. You might hear Jack huffing in the background. As I said, it's kind of late tonight, but I really wanted to get this recording out there and kind of answer some questions. So I'm just doing light swoops of back and forth motions. And I'm trying not to make it look so uniform that it's cartoonish, because that's the last thing you want for this classical style point, uh, painting. I'm just putting in some lighter values. I'm making a gazillion marks. And you'll notice what I'm not doing is starting at the base and going all the way down. So that would be the equivalent of like drawing, but then you get cartoony. So I'm only putting values or lights to darks where the light is naturally hitting it. Let's put some lighter areas in here. I feel a little bit of a need to blend, so let's pull up that smeary round again. Make sure our reset's at zero. And I'm going to blend. Now this one's being a little clumpy. So I'm gonna show you a trick. We're gonna to go to Window, Brush Control Panels, and we are gonna find, Well is in here somewhere. Mm, let's just open up General, it'll show us the well. So, you know what, I take that back. Let's go to Size. You see how the expression under Size is set to Pressure? We're gonna turn that off. So size, expression, none. And then I am looking for blending. Make sure enhanced layer blending is on under blending. And we'll close that. And now I'll make a crazy mark here. It's a little harsh. You know what, let's just kind of reset the bleed. Let's put that bleed back to 100 and that feature a little bit lower. There we go. So it should be a nice soft brush. 
And again, I'm just kind of going over top of some of these areas, just lightly touching them, and they kind of feather in now. And I'm going to keep building up this area with that detail brush until I have a really nice range of highlights because she's got some beautiful silky highlights in this hair. And that's only going to come from building up your contrast and giving some kind of separation in the hair. So in between, if this were a real world, um, a real, real, real world painting, it's getting late, I would save a lot of versions of this. So don't be afraid to just keep say, doing a file, save as. And I would continue working the same way throughout here. Let's look at that original. We can fake some dark marks to look like it's starting to kind of uh, separate as we have different locks doing different things. So a little bit of separation in there. Then take our smeary round again since it's set to a blender. And it's still a little harsh for me. Let's go see if we can find an alternate brush. Uh, I'm going to go to blenders. And, you know, let me try smear. Nope. I'm going to try to speckle course. Nope. Hmm, oily blender. That actually might not be bad. Let's try this. Ooh, it gets a little grainy. Let's turn that grain down to 10. Yeah, I'm not liking that brush as a blender. Okay, or for this. Let's try grainy water. What I'm looking for is a nice, soft, large blender that allows me to have a little separation. And this is not doing it for me, so let me undo those. We're going to go back to oils. And go back to that smeary round again. So I'm going to stay with my smeary round. I think with it getting so late, it's kind of getting to me. So I hope that helps. And you can see we're starting to build up a believable um, amount of hair. And I would keep working the way I did here all throughout those extra strands. So give yourself plenty of time, plenty of saves. It really is worth it in the end. And unfortunately, hair is not exactly a quick fix when you're painting freehand like this. So I know there's a million different ways to paint it, um, but this is how I tackle hair. And if you'd like to see more of my work, and especially all my freehand paintings of uh, lots of wispy and voluminous hair, you can see that at heatherthepainter.com. And then if you'd like to learn how I paint those and actually um, obtain my custom brush sets, which were built very specifically for those looks, you can visit heatherthepainterstore.com. So thanks guys, good night.